Now, so I'm rounding off now. Rounding off. Go to Psalm 41, verse 1 to 2. Because all throughout the Bible, there's a consistent train of thought. See? And again, I say, you know, many people haven't read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Brothers and sisters, if any of you haven't read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation, then you need to. You know why? Because then you will never, if you haven't, you can't understand the consistent train of thought throughout the whole Bible. You can't see the pattern of repeat and enlarge. It's difficult to have the overall picture. What's the overall picture? Blessing for obedience, curse for disobedience. Victory through, through Christ um, and destruction <coughs> through serving Satan. Okay, brothers and sisters? That's all the way right the way through. You see? Especially as Seventh-day Adventists should be people that have studied from Gen and read from Genesis to Revelation. Now it says here, Psalm 41, verse 1 to 2. Notice, blessed is he that, notice what does it say? Mm -hmm. Considereth the poor. Mm -hmm. When would the Lord deliver him? In time of trouble, you see? So who's the promise given to? Those who deliver the poor. The same as what's taught in the parable of the sheep and the goats. Now notice it doesn't say only in time of trouble. So it doesn't say the time of trouble. It says in time of trouble, even though it's the same parallel. Because this is a present promise. See? If we consider the poor, the Lord will deliver you and I in a time of trouble. So if you've got trouble in your life, the first thing to ask is, are you helping others? See? No? And what it said, the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. And if you read on down, that's the promise of physical health as well. You can eat as healthily as you want. You can follow the healthy form as well as you think, eating, you know, it's the correct diet, exercising, your water, taking your sunshine. You can be doing all of these things, but if your hearts are selfish, that doesn't mean anything inside of God. And that's why people in people in satanic religion, they follow a strictly health, healthy diet. But the whole reason is so that their minds can be clear so that they can serve their dark master. See? You know, even the Rosicrucians, I remember um, Red was speaking about this. He, he, he was speaking with another brother called IK. And they were showing how the Rosicrucians have got a strict vegan diet. This is Rosicrucians, see? So they know the benefits of eating healthily, but it's all that their minds can be clear to serve their master. How much more us? And if we're truly healthy, then our minds will be clear up on the mission that God's called us to. Okay, brothers and sisters? So, just a few more paragraphs to close now. So the 144,000, they'll be tested and proved by the government of God, you see? Ministering to the poor and needy, especially to the poor and needy brethren within God's church, and notice at the same time exposing the powers of darkness. They'll be proven to be noble champions of the truth and thus deemed ready to be citizens of heaven. Because again, remember, we've got three angels' messages. The first, the second, and the third, especially the third. That's the last message of warning. And again, I'm noticing in this time, how many people are giving that third angel a message as it should? People are too afraid to talk about wrong, too afraid to talk about the mark of the beast, you know? Again, I've got to lay it plain. There's so much talk about health these days as well. Many, many weeks of health seminars, but that's the right arm of the message. It's not the message, you see? To the neglect of the preaching of the word, that's where it starts, see? You know? So you see, brothers, we've got to get a right perspective of where we are. As, as, as individuals. Because look, the wicked will not be able to destroy the 144,000 in the time of trouble because they will be delivered by the Almighty God. Filled with the Holy Spirit and fully reflecting the character of the Lord Jesus Christ, they would have been proven to be faithful and loyal to God. They would have gained victory over sin through the merits of Christ's blood, and they will be God's final trophies of grace. Revealing to the universe the redeeming power of his self-sacrificing love. See? So that's really what it is. 
Now I can tell you, I know it's no light thing to serve God. Even just need to stand up here to preach. You know, who am I? Who are any of us of ourselves? See, but God in his mercy wants us to be drawn closer to him. He wants to fill us with his love. And remember, he's our elder brother. The problem is, is that we've got to count the cost of what it means to be a Christian. If everything's going smooth and if everything's fine, something is wrong. You know why? Because the Spirit of God is given as a restraining influence to us. He's there to warn us and keep us from ourselves. See? And that's what many of us don't want. Oh Lord, it's too hard. It's too, it's too, I want to have fun. Yes, you know, I want to enjoy life. But you can enjoy life in Christ. Yeah. And you will. There's nothing greater than serving him. But unless you know this for yourself, then how can you experience it? You see? So, you know, brothers and sisters, we need to have a clearer understanding of the mission and purpose of the seven day Adventist church. Okay? We're not to join hands with spiritual Babylon by refusing to expose the powers of darkness in the religious world that are trampling upon the law of God and causing the softening in the world, then become traits to Christ. Do you see? So that's why we've been raised up to expose the powers of darkness that are causing the suffering, so that people can make a choice. How can we put people make a choice to serve God if they don't really know what's going on? We do. We've got all the answers, you see. But the key is that we're to bring a loving spirit to the people. Not this hardness and arrogance, and, and despite simply fanaticism that there is amongst us. You know? I wouldn't want to come into any church where I just see sour faces. With me? What am I coming there for? You know, as, as a drunkard in, in the street can know something as basic as that. But if we're willing to live as God wants us to, to help others and to let his self-sacrificing love dwell in our hearts, then we're going to be a power to the world, brothers and sisters. So, yes. So you see, God is good. Jesus is love. He knows how to challenge us. Because remember, God wants to take us higher. Okay, so brothers and sisters, remember our eternal destiny is going to be determined upon one point, which is what we've done or have not done to Christ in the person of his one suffering. So may the Lord add his blessing to his word as we continue this afternoon. Let us bow to the Lord's prayer. Amen.